A while ago I tested one of the, if not the fastest, single core CPU ever released, the Intel Celeron G470 on the socket LGA1155. Although it's not what you would consider fast, it is still pretty usable in 2023 for basic usage. So that must mean all of the LGA1155 CPUs are awesome. This right here is the Intel Celeron G440. It is a 1.6 gigahertz, one core, one threaded CPU. Apparently it has smart cache as well, so that means it's epic, right? No, not really. Today I'm going to be reviewing it. I'm pairing this with an RTX 3060 and 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. Sorry ahead of time if you get headaches from very low frame rates. So I normally benchmark Apex Legends first, though I feel like this is appropriate to do something a little bit different. And that a little bit differentness is, how does this CPU perform in, well, Windows? And the answer to that is absolutely horrendously. Yeah, so opening File Explorer takes up to 30 seconds. Task Manager at times stops responding, and it lags, and if you go over and try to do anything like web browsing, you're looking at 30 plus seconds for anything to load, and if you try to load two things at once, you might as well go and walk your dog or something. I'm not exaggerating. It takes 10 minutes to open Discord with a good internet connection. Actually, no, that's a lie. Almost 11 minutes. It took 10 minutes and 58 seconds. And this has an SSD. And I know for a fact somebody is going to go and say, use Linux, it's much better. So I did. I went over and put in my Linux Debian hard drive and uh, the mouse was literally frozen half the time. It was almost unusable to even click on a single icon. Maybe that's just because of a driver problem, I don't know. Maybe Linux isn't really able to go and switch between computers on the same hard drive. I don't know, I'm not a Linux person, but it didn't work good. And no, I'm not going to be testing Windows Vista, Windows XP, or Windows 7 because they are unsecure. I had some game updates on the Epic Game Store, and I decided to go over and do the updates. Well, I didn't decide to do it, the Epic Game Store decided for me, so I decided to do the updates itself. And, uh, well, I had it sitting for over four and a half hours, and I couldn't load the icons while it was updating. And after four and a half hours of sitting, I decided, well, if I can't go over and update the games on this CPU, there's no reason for me to update the games on another CPU. The reason why is because, well, that's cheating, and if I can't even use the Epic Game Store app on this, there's no point in me testing any of the games on there. And to give you another idea of how bad this CPU is, I went over and tested Cinebench R23, and it gave me the lowest score I have ever gotten, of 214 points. For context, a Pentium 4 641 gets 457 points, over double the amount. The only other CPU that competes is the AMD Athlon 2 160U, which I tested in a previous video that got 221 points. So yes, this is utterly horrible. Apex Legends did not work very well, so when I tried opening it, all that happened was I got the Apex Legends screen and it locked the computer up. And I thought Apex Legends would work good, but nope, it didn't. I also tried Battlebit Remastered, I had good hopes for it, and uh, well, that didn't work either. I also tried Brawlhalla, a game that runs on practically anything, even the slowest CPU I've ever tested ran this, and uh, nope, it locked the entire computer up again, and of course, Call of Duty Warzone 2.0, it locked the entire computer up as well. To try to fix this problem, I tried a different hard drive, I also went over and tried reinstalling the graphics drivers, and no, nothing helped. It's the CPU causing this. Also, see. CSGO, not CSGO 2, but CSGO, it kind of ran, I was able to open the game, but it took so long to load into a match, it would disconnect me, so it doesn't really run, but it at least open, so there's that. The one game that actually did work, which surprised me, was Beam NG Drive. And I tested the game on the very low settings at 1080p, and I was on one of the easiest maps to run. And that was the super flat map. And I don't normally test the super flat map unless I'm on a very slow CPU, and I think this qualifies as very slow. Well, either way, the game only got 10 frames per second. Yes, 10, 1, 0. 
and the 1% low was zero, so, uh, well, I don't know what else to say, it's horrible. One game that actually did run somewhat okay was Portal Non-RTX. It got 28 frames per second on average with a 1% low of about 3. Though, most of the time it was below 30, often dropping into the tens, or even the single digits, and that was on a regular occurrence, so I would actually go as far as to say this is unplayable. I honestly never thought I would say a CPU is unplayable in Portal, but well, here we are. The only game I would actually consider playable actually surprised me, and that is Minecraft Bedrock Edition on a super flat world on the lowest possible settings. It was getting 30 frames per second, and I had a 1% low of 4, though all in all it wasn't really that bad. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was horrible, but... In terms of playability, it really didn't drop much below 25 frames per second regularly. So, at least in Minecraft, this was, I guess, sort of okay, but this is by far the worst CPU I've ever used. So, if you're looking for an LGA1155 CPU, please don't buy this. Buy literally any other CPU on the socket. Literally any other CPU. There is countless CPUs, and this... D d this don't even consider this as an option. Get like a one core two thread Celeron, or even a four core four thread i5, or a four core eight thread Z. Okay, I'm sorry. This sucks. Just don't buy this. For context of how bad this is, you can literally spend four dollars more and get a four core eight thread Xeon, and it will perform so much better. Okay, just check this video out. All right, I spent eleven dollars on this Xeon and. $7 on this Celeron, and just look how much better the Xeon is. Okay, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Sorry for blinding you. <laughs>